Hi, my name is Derek, and my wife over here, Jenna, asked me to Photoshop a quote onto a coffee mug she's going to put on her blog for sale. So I figured, why not turn on the cameras and show you how I work? So we're going to go ahead and dive on in here. This is the coffee mug that we're going to be using, and the quote that I worked up real quick is this guy here. So real quick, to get it ready, what I'm going to do is take this mug, I'll hit Command J to duplicate it onto its own layer over here. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. The shortcut I'm using here is spacebar and the command key to get my zoom tool. I'll get in close enough I can see it. I'll hit the letter L to get my lasso tool and just quickly draw a rough selection around it. Then I'm gonna hit Control Shift and Delete to bring up my fill option dialog box. You can also get there by going to uh, Edit, Fill, right? And I'm gonna use the Content Aware Fill and what that's gonna do is just look around everything next to it use that as its source and fill it in. So just like that, we've got the logo uh, from the other mug gone and I've got it isolated on my own layer here. Now I'm gonna do, since this is a vector graphic made in Illustrator, I can highlight the whole thing, hit Command C to copy, jump back over here to Photoshop, hit Command V to paste, and I'm going to paste this as a smart object. The reason why is should she change her mind in the future, which I know she won't do, but if she does, uh, say different color, <laughs> she's smart. <laughs> getting dirty looks over here. Uh, anyway, if we need to make a change, it's a simple change, and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Now, it looks kind of grainy because I'm zoomed in pretty pretty close, and this isn't a big image to begin with, but uh, what we want to do is make it look like it's bending around the cup. So what I'm going to do is select this, hit Command T to get my transform. Uh, it's the same as going to Edit, Free Transform here. And I'm going to, oh, that's right, I forgot about that. Okay, since this is a smart object, I can't use the warp like I would like to. So what I'm going to do is turn this into another smart object. And now when I hit Command T, I have the option to warp this. So I'll click once on that. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and click down here and just kind of bend it a little bit to make it follow the curvature of the cup a little bit. So we have this rim here that I'm kind of following. And this is just rough. It just kind of has to look real. Um, and also it's gonna be a little bit skewed because of the way that this cup is shaped. So anyway, I'm just gonna kinda nudge it a little bit to get it close enough to to look like the product mock-up that we're using here. And for the sake of the tutorial, we'll go ahead and call that good. Now I'm gonna hit Command-1, which will take me to the actual zoom level. If I come up here to view, um, Command-1, there we go. That's 100% zoom to see what it looks like. Now some options I could play with this to make this blend in with the cup more is I could change the blend mode to multiply, which would help it blend in. The shadows would pop through that graphic. The other thing I like to do is if I double click in here, I can grab these blending layer styles and it's gonna be tough to see in this example, but basically uh, what it's gonna do is anything white in the top layer, once I get it down to a certain percentage, it'll start to fade away. Okay, um, the underlying layers, so the darks, will start to pop through depending on how I do this. And, and this is something you could play with to make it real, especially if you're on a shirt or something and you're trying to Photoshop a, a shirt into a, um, or a logo into a shirt. But in this case, you're not seeing much of a difference. Okay, so now the benefit by doing it this way is I can double click on the smart object and it brings me into the smart object inside of Photoshop. And since this was another smart object, if I double click one more time, it'll actually bring me back into Illustrator as a vector graphic. So I could click in here, and let's say instead of purple, they wanted it to be a green color. When I hit save, this is a separate vector smart object, and this is the original. It doesn't mess with the original at all. When I come back into Photoshop, I save this smart object, and then when I step back over into the original document, you see it changed it back to this green color. Uh, so I'm gonna hit Command Z though because she wants it in purple. And that is about it. Hopefully you learned something and I'm gonna ship this off to my wife.